What's really holding you back? What are you afraid of? Take some action. Get started now. 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 Thank you guys so much for tuning in yet again to my channel. I want to bring on a special guest, Ren. I know you guys have heard about her. You've seen her all over. Today, we're going to take a deep dive and talk with Ren and share her story. Hey. Hi, Ren. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Della, for having me. I really appreciate it. We finally made it happen. Yes, finally. Long time coming. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's the perfect time. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. So catch us up. You've got a lot of great life updates. How's it going? Life is, I, I actually posted something about this. I said, this is like the best life has ever been. Um, so yeah, life is like the best it's ever been. You know, my skin is clear. You know, I moved into <laughs> my new apartment. So many wonderful things, you know. Um, but yeah, no, life is is fantastic. I um, just recently, you know, landed a new position. So, so many new things uh, that are happening in my life. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here and Looking forward to sharing some of those things. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. It's Thanks. it's so nice to catch up with you and to see all of your success. And for me, especially to see another, you know, African-American woman just crushing the game, pivoting into sales and really helping others uh, transition into tech. We just met with Kervon. His interview is going to come out. I'm sure before this comes out, it'll be out the week before. He talked about his mentorship with you as well as Joseph Smith. A lot of great, phenomenal things happening in the course career space and just the impactful community that course careers is able to help build. So really just appreciate course careers and you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah course so careers. Course, shout out to course careers and Troy and yeah, like absolutely an incredible platform. Uh, that's changing the lives of so many. And so, you know, I'm sure you feel the same, Della. It's like, it's the least that we can do, you know, to try to, you know, figure out our own ways of being able to help people along their journey. So super thrilled to, to be a part of it. Absolutely. So Course Careers changed my life. It obviously changed yours too. <laughs> Talk about that journey. What made you even want to try this online course? I'm sure you didn't know a whole lot about it, but talk yeah. about that. Yeah, so it was uh, it was September, rough or no, it was like actually October, October of 2022, um, and I was just in this space where I said to myself, okay, you know, I, I really want to, I need change. It was October 2022, and I was living in uh, Atlanta. Um, I've been living in Atlanta on and off since 2016. Um, and I left Atlanta in August of 2022. And I was just in this space of like, what next? Like what, you know, I was walking dogs. Many of you know my story. And for those that don't, um, I was a dog walker. Um, background is mainly customer service, nonprofit, a little bit of education uh, background in there too. But at that time specifically, I was a dog walker. And, you know, it's like you... I, I know what God has put in me. Like I, even now, just the way that, you know, I kind of go about helping people on their journeys, like this has always been within me, but I didn't know how to get it started. I didn't know, you know, how to get my voice heard, how to impact the world and, you know, do any of that stuff. So I was just trying to figure out what the heck am I supposed to be doing <laughs> and where am I supposed to be? You know, God, you've, put something on my heart, but I, I'm just not seeing how it's all going to make sense right now. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I came across as, as many people did, uh, the interview with Anthony O'Neill and Cyrus Harbin. Um, and Anthony O'Neill is someone that I followed for many, many years, um, since he's, you know, been on the Dave Ramsey platform. So I felt like, well, you know, if he's saying something about this, then, you know, it has to be something that's solid. Um, I did more research, found, you know, more about Cyrus and all of that. And um, I think that was probably like the second to third-ish week of October. And um, I told my mom, I was like, hey, I, I really want to do this. I really think that this would be a really good, you know, kind of career path for me, I guess. Um, and I'm one of those people that I haven't worked a nine to five in a very long time. 
I've been an independent contractor uh, for a very long time. So the thought of going back to a nine to five was very scary for me. But I was like, well, this is different. This allows me to enter into the tech space. And, you know, I've always wanted to enter into the tech space, but I thought I needed to be a coder or a data analyst or something like that. So, um, so yeah, you know, with all that being said, I ended up asking my mom for uh, the money and uh, yeah, she gave me the money and I literally started course careers maybe a day or two later. So I was just in this space of turning 34 and I remember the night of my birthday in September of last year, I was about to uh, turn 34 and I just had a long prayer with God. And I'm like, God, I know what you've called me to do, but I don't really know the steps. Um, and I said, I really want 34 to be different, way different. I mean, I, I, I literally can see myself sitting on my bed the night before I turned 34, just crying out in prayer. Like I need a shift. Um, and literally a month later, started course careers and that was all, that was all, that was all God wrote. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, that, um, reminds me of a quote by Steve Jobs where he says, you can't really connect the dots looking forward. Ooh. But when you look back, then you can connect the dots to how you got to your success. I love that. I absolutely That's love that. That's good. Yeah. So speaking of connecting dots and to your success, your journey is very different than others. Talk to us about what makes Ren special and what makes you different from everybody else, because we all are different. But what are some challenges that you specifically in your life had to overcome? Oh, gosh, I I've overcome many, many obstacles. I've overcome uh, an eating disorder. Uh, specifically, I've overcome uh, depression. Um, and super, super crippling anxiety. Um, and I still talk to this day about my anxiety and my ADHD, but those are in where the, the space that I'm in and the, the holistic kind of journey that I've taken myself on, I mean, it's way better than it was years ago. It was, my anxiety was so bad. It was just hard to, you know, just be in a room with people and have a conversation. Um, and you know, when people see me, they are often like, oh, you're just, you're so outgoing. You have such a bubbly <laughs> personality, you know? And it's like, I wasn't always this person. Like I really, you know, I, I, I was always very shy. Um, I was always the quietest one. Um, you know, so just overcoming, you know, that lack of confidence as well, uh, was something that I, you know, I, I had to work through every single day. Um, and so, yeah, and then, you know, my learning disability is something that I've had to overcome and had to work through. So, you know, the, the, the challenges, they're either going to stop you, mm -hmm. right? Or they're going to make you say, you know what, this could actually be uh, an open door for me to, uh, to tell my testimony mm -hmm. um, because someone's always going to resonate. I promise you, someone's mm -hmm. always going to, we think nobody's going to listen to my story. Della, that's exactly what I thought. I remember getting on LinkedIn for the first time just back in October. And I was like, I don't, I, I've never used this platform. I don't really know what to do, but I'm just gonna share my story. So I would share things like, you know, I've got an interview or I would share things like, um, you know, just keep me in your thoughts and prayers, you know, as I transition into the space and being vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's what people ended up, you know, just connecting to was my transparency and just the fact that I was able to be vulnerable at any given time. So, um, yeah, you know, and I, I, it's funny because literally five months ago I was outside walking dogs like people think that well five or six months ago now but people think that you know uh, like Ren how'd you do it and I'm just like God I you know I don't know like I just <laughs> you know I, I just I told my story and you know and fortunately so many of you have followed me from literally living at my mom's house starting course careers to now moving in you know my newest apartment uh, in Richmond, Virginia. And it's all because 
I got out of myself mm -hmm. and out of my own ego, my pride, my fear, and, you know, just decided to start share, sharing my story. Very wonderful. And I can speak for all of us when we say thank you for that vulnerability and, you know, just really pushing past that and having the boldness and, you know, just the, you know, just the audacity to just be you, you know? Yeah. So thank we appreciate you. that and we appreciate you, you know? So, you so much. yeah, you talk about imposter syndrome. Um, talk to me about how that has affected you, number one, and then how you work towards overcoming that each day, each transition, each time it, it appears, you know, it rears its ugly head. How do you silence that? Yeah, you know, so the imposter syndrome, here's the thing, and, and Della and I were kind of talking about this off the air, guys, but it doesn't go away. Like it, it does, you every phase of your life, right? You You, as you climb the ladder, whatever that looks like for you, you're always going to feel like, I don't think I'm good enough to do this task. You know, it, it's only going to be a matter of time before they figure out, I really don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know? And it's like at every level in your life, pretty much, you're going to have those moments. Um, and so for me, it's like, you know, coming from, you know, customer service where I worked like, you know, in the hotel industry as, as a guest services representative, like those to me, it was like, it, it was easy. You know, when I thought of tech, I made it this like monumental thing in my mind. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to learn the information. I don't know, you know, I'm not super tech savvy, you know, like all of these things and all of these emotions. Um, and like I was telling Della at Off Air as well, I really had to um, soothe, self-soothe my inner child um, because my inner child was just saying, you know, that, that little girl in me that felt like certain things were too monumental. They were, you know, big giants. Uh, that's still how she felt. And I'm 34 years old, you know, but she's still in there and she felt like they're going to see through me. They're going to see that I don't know what I'm doing. And if I'm being honest, I think that actually was a plus in a way, because, you know, people knew that, you know, when I interviewed, I didn't, I hadn't had a tech sales role before, um, but I was enthusiastic. I was coachable. I was, you know, just like so excited in every interview that it became a thing for me where it's like, it clicked. I was like, hey, Ren, I don't think... I don't think they're really looking at the fact that you've never done this before and this is a completely new space. They're mo mainly looking at who you are and what you're showing to them in, in these interviews and, you know, the character and all of these other qualities about yourself. Um, so that definitely helped to ease my imposter syndrome because it's like, well, you know, at the core of it, I, I can learn the job, you know, mm -hmm. I can, if you you know, put me in a training and an onboarding, I can learn the position. Um, but the the ultimate thing is it comes to it comes down to getting out of your own head. Yep. Um, we are, I don't care who you are right now, everybody right now is in their own way when it comes to something. Mm-hmm something, whether it's exercising, eating better, you know, holding yourself accountable for what you said you were going to do. Everybody's in their way about something. And it's like, the sooner you get out of your own way, I I'm telling you, like, I'm not here to sell you nothing. I'm not here to make you believe in anything but yourself. The sooner you get out of your own way, that's when all of the doors, it's just, it unlocks. I'm telling you, it's just been God's just been, it's just been thing, win after win after win after win, because I decided, hey, you know what? Yeah, I've got this fear and I don't really know if I'm going to do a good job at this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Guys, you got to do it with the fear because that that's the only way. And that's what I had to do for myself. I had to do it with the fear. Absolutely. I tell my daughters that sometimes they're like, oh, but I'm afraid. And I tell them, well, you know what? You can't be brave unless you're afraid, right? Now you get to say you're brave. That now, part. That's so cool. Now you're brave. Yes. Now you're courageous because you can't do that without fear. Exactly. So I love that. Exactly. And you you said something else that reminded me of a story, you know. Um, and if you know, you know. 
That part. <laughs> <laughs> that part, okay. You know, I see. <laughs> there was a time where you look up and you see things as giants and yourself as a grasshopper, but you yeah. had to first see yourself as the grasshopper. But in reality, you are the giant. And that thing that you think Ooh. is the giant is the grasshopper. Ooh. Keep that. <laughs> Keep that in your memory. As somebody who also struggles with wow. imposter syndrome, that that verse wow. resonates with me so much. And I have to go back and reread it. So that's that comes powerful. from the Bible, but <laughs> that's powerful. You gotta yes. remember that. You are the giant. Mm, love that. I love that. You, because it it's the truth. You know, we, we make everything else so big. And it's like if you can over, overcome this. Oh, you're going to, the, the world you're going to unlock and what's on the other side. Oh man. Beautiful. Oh man. It is. And you know what? Representation is so powerful because you talked about yes. how you made tech so big in your head. And I remember when I was younger, I did the same thing. And I thought if anybody watches the fairly odd parents, I thought in order to be tech and in tech and good at tech, you had to yes. look like Mr. Crocker, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That's what I thought tech looked like. But no, yes. if you are able to look in a mirror, you are what tech looks like. Absolutely. You are what tech looks like. And you if it's Absolutely. something that you want to do, go do it. You can do it, you know. So thank you so much for sharing that, Ren. Beautiful. Absolutely. Story. Love it. So your learning disorder. Um, yes. I know there are so many people you know, worldwide who struggle with learning disabilities. And sometimes even if it's not a diagnosed learning disability, mm -hmm. um, the whole IQ scale, that is based off of exposure. Yes. So yeah. talk to me about how you had to figure out how Ren learns. Let me not do this the way that everybody else do it in the way it's supposed to be done because I'm not a robot. I'm yeah. an individual. I'm a person. Yeah. How did you figure that out? Yeah. So, you know, I growing up, my mom uh, was a school teacher and um, I just, I don't know. Like I, I would always see kids in class learning things way quicker than me. Um, and I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on? And I wasn't diagnosed as a child. So, you know, but I always knew something was different. Um, and so my learning disability specifically is I have a uh, comprehension learning disability. It's really hard for me to comprehend things. So I have to go over things over and over and over again, or you have to put things in like super layman's terms in order for me to get them. Um, and so, you know, how I overcame it was I would look at, you know, like definitions, like for instance, <laughs> this is so funny. When when I was interviewing for companies, like the first time around that I was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, interviewing for companies back in October, November, the companies would have things like, yeah, you know, our AI data is the most revolutionary data. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so what does it do? <laughs> like, just, just tell me what it does, please. You know, <laughs> so I have to go down a complete like rabbit hole of watching YouTube content or, you know, I don't know, uh, going to whatever kind of reviews that they might have on Glassdoor by their employees that, you know, where their employees are kind of breaking it down. Yeah, I love working here because our product does this and this is why I love it. So that's what I have to do in order to like, oh, have that aha moment. Oh, okay, this is what you do. Um, and so, you know, and I have to write things down, you know, a, a ton of times before it makes sense. Um, even when I was in the interview process, I had um, sticky notes on my laptop to where the interviewer couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> and it would just say, okay, this company's uh, product, they sell a product that helps people learn like something <laughs> to where it just made sense to me yeah and it wasn't this you know because here's the thing like in this space i've heard so many different phrases that i've never heard before and so <laughs> it's like okay i have to break it down so that whenever i'm selling the product I know how to sell the product and I can, you know, especially being on the phone or, you know, with a, with a prospect, you want to be able to explain it in the easiest way possible. 
So, you know, that was just kind of my method. And, you know, I have to sit with things and take my time to process. And sometimes, like I said, I have to go over and over. So, yeah, you know, having uh, a, a learning disability growing up and not being diagnosed with it was definitely tough because I always, like I said, I felt off. And then even the uh, first tech sales role from, you know, the company that I worked for for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, when I was going through the onboarding process, I remember um, talking to my manager um, and I said, hey, like I, I learn differently. Um, I, learn, I, I learn at a much slower pace um, because everyone was getting it like so fast. And I started to feel worried. Yeah. Because I'm like, I, I don't want to be left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, what might take you two days might take me two weeks, but I'm going to get it. But I have to go about it in my own way. And he was just like, Ren, wh what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? How do you need me to show up for you? How can we help you learn this information? And so he ended up uh, directing me to one of the resources that they had at the company with like just a plethora of information about our products wow. and they had so many like um like different like homework assignments that you could do but it was it was very easy you know they didn't make it very hard and that's actually how i learned more about the product and how to sell it was going through the the like the university uh that they have there to to learn that way all right, guys, that wraps up part one. I know, I know it was getting good, right? Don't worry. Part two will be out on Thursday. Part three comes out on Saturday and the full video is going to come out on Sunday. So stay tuned for to hear the rest of the nuggets. But what I will say, make sure you get a plan of action down. Don't just listen to this passively and think that, oh, it's great for that person, but I want to do it next. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. I'm here to tell you, you can, all right? You're smarter, stronger, and more powerful than you think. So get that plan in action written down and go execute. We'll see you guys in the next one.